Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Small electronics are used in nearly every aspect of our lives and cell phones are among the most important. They allow us to stay in contact with loved ones and then also do other things like stay up to date with current events and weather. Even if we were to experience some sort of collapse that knocks out cell service on a wide scale, our phones would still have many uses even if they couldn't connect to a network. Pictures of loved ones could be used to help find them if you get separated. And then also things like apps and pre-downloaded PDFs can be used as reference materials to help you in various situations. But our cell phones and other small electronics are only useful if we can keep them charged up long term. So this video is going to cover 10 ways that you can use to keep your cell phone charged without electricity. There's a lot of questionable hacks out there, but these are 10 legit ways that you can keep your phone and other small electronics up and running without having to worry about damaging those devices. And while most of these are for USB devices, there are some that can be used for traditional AC powered devices as well. And when it comes to cell phones specifically, one of the first things that you need to do during a power outage is conserve the power that you do have. And modern cell phones make this pretty easy. Just go into the settings and turn on low power mode on iPhones and then power saving on other devices. And you can also do other things like turn off Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and close out any apps that you aren't using. And if you're concerned about how long the power outage is going to last and you may not have a good way to recharge that phone, you definitely want to avoid doing things like playing games and watching videos on your phone because those are activities that drain a lot of power. And when it comes to actually charging devices, portable battery banks are a great choice because since they are USB based, they can charge your phone along with anything else that uses a USB cord to charge. And the thing to look out for with these is their capacity, which is usually measured in milliamp hours. The bigger, the better. This particular one has a 10,000 milliamp hour capacity, so it should be able to charge my phone, which has a 3,000 or 3,100 milliamp hour battery around three times. If you use cordless power tools, you can probably use their battery to help you charge USB devices also. Most power tool companies make adapters like this one that allow you to charge devices from your power tool batteries. And this is what we used a lot before we got our first generator. Before a storm came, we'd go ahead and charge these up. And then we would use our batteries and this adapter to keep our small devices running. The one shown here has one USB-A port, but Milwaukee now produces an inverter that you can use to connect AC powered electronics to your power tool batteries. This isn't something that I've tried out, but it does look like an interesting concept. And some tools like this Lantern also have USB ports built into them, which is nice. I always like something that has more than one use. One of the best ways to keep your phone and other devices charged during a power outage is solar. In fact, it's probably your best bet if you're wanting something that you can use to keep those going long term just because it uses a renewable power source. Even a relatively small solar power station and set of panels should be able to keep devices going almost indefinitely. And some panels like those made by Jackery have USB ports built into them so that you can charge your phone and other things like battery banks directly from them. But if you don't have the money to buy like a full solar generator setup, then you can always buy like a set of those small folding solar panels like what backpackers use and a couple of battery banks. So that way you have sort of a small solar generator that you can at least keep USB devices powered from. Another completely grid independent way to charge your cell phone and other devices is the BioLite camp stove. It runs on natural materials like sticks and twigs and converts some of the thermal energy from the fire into electricity which you can use to charge devices. It stores that power in its internal battery which has a 3200 milliamp hour capacity and that should be enough to charge most phones around one time. And you can also get some other accessories for that camp stove like a kettle and then also a grill top which I didn't have the money to pick those up when I got the stove, but they would definitely make cooking with it a lot easier just because if you're using something like a traditional skillet, you're going to have to take it off every time that you need to add more fuel to the fire. So if you have the money to spend, I would kind of 
lean more towards getting those additional accessories if you could. I just didn't have the money for it at the time. Your car is another tool that you can use to keep your phone charged during a power outage, but how you do that will depend on your car's age and the specific features that your car has. Most modern vehicles have multiple USB ports built into them for that purpose, but your car may also have an AC plug as well for running other electronics, like my truck has one that can handle up to 400 watts. But if you have an older vehicle that doesn't have USB or AC outlets, then you can always use a 12 volt adapter in your car's cigarette lighter port. If you want to run larger AC power devices, then you can pick up an inverter that will hook up directly to your car's battery. And making sure that your car's fuel tank is at least half full at all times will make sure that you can use it to power devices and also travel at least a little ways if you need to. Car battery jump packs are special battery packs that you can use to jump start your car if you have a dead battery, but many of these also have USB ports built into them so that you can charge other devices as well. Hand crank charges are another way to get at least some power for your cell phone, but it's important to understand with those, it's going to be very difficult to go from 0% to 100% battery charge just by using a hand crank, but you should still be able to get enough power to send a couple text messages or make a very short phone call. Most hand crank chargers nowadays are built into things like emergency radios. This is the Midland ER310. I did a review on it a while back. So stick around to the end of the video and I'll be sure to put a card at the end. But the Midland ER310, it has the hand crank charger, it has a solar panel on top, which are used to recharge its internal lithium ion battery. But if that battery goes dead for one reason or another, then it can also run on six double A's as well. So it's a pretty versatile way to A, have an emergency radio, but also have another way that you can charge your cell phone if needed. And it's important to remember that not every power outage is the result of the apocalypse or some awful regional weather disaster. So for situations where you lose power, but the rest of the world around you goes on spinning, there's no harm at all of going somewhere like a restaurant, hotel lobby, or a library and going ahead and charging your devices there, or just spend some time at a friend's or a relative's house. And one backup power source that a lot of people forget that they have is their laptop. Laptop batteries tend to have a fairly large capacity, so you should be able to charge your phone from that at least a few times. And of course, for this to be useful, your laptop needs to actually have power in it when the electricity goes out. So you need to go ahead and charge that up if you know a storm is on the way. And if you want to see other devices that you should charge before a storm, I strongly recommend you checking out this video. And if you want to learn more about the Midland ER310 that I showed earlier, click over here. So y'all have a good one. Thanks again. But wait, there's more. Just in case you were wondering how many potatoes it would actually take to charge a cell phone, according to Popular Mechanics, the answer is around 110 pounds. So unless you're a potato farmer, I would strongly recommend utilizing one or more of the methods that we discussed earlier in the video. So, bye for real this time.